This is Genesis Apologetics, an organization that believes in a literal interpretation of the Bible and proponents of a young earth. They have a series where these two high school students try to debunk evolution. Obviously that is very silly to those of us on the outside who understand science, so let's see what they have to say in this video titled, Debunking Evolution, Common Ancestors. Is it just me, or does the evolutionary tree seem more like an orchard? You know, looks can be deceiving. Our evolutionary tree is actually one singular tree. But if you zoom in far enough, then it will appear to look more like a bunch of different trees. However, we can trace every organism back to a common ancestor through many different methods, not just through fossils. The Tree of Life diagram is very much like the Pando, which is a full-on forest on the outside. But if you are to dig it up, then you'd find that it's actually all one organism. Pretty cool, right? Alright, let's see if we can do this. Nope, that doesn't stay up. No, you've gotta stay. Stay. Hey Jane. So, gotta be honest, I haven't really had a chance to study too much. About evolution? That is abundantly obvious watching these videos. Uh-huh. But... Jane! Sorry. I was just taking a break. I got this new makeup case and I'm having a hard time figuring out where to... Put everything. Ugh. See, organization just is not my thing. Once my little sister asked me to organize all her little tiny plastic animals, took me two days. Organizing animals? <laughs> it's like Carl Linnaeus. Who's that? Yeah, he was the first guy to classify animals. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I remember him now. Um, his motto was, God created, Linnaeus ordered. Yeah, his work is the basis for the classification system we still use today. But you'll realize that our phylogeny and taxonomy is way more complicated and accurate than it was back then. Back then, we kind of just classified things by how they look. Sort of like classifying bats as birds. Back then, it would have made sense, but now we know better. Bats are mammals. Yeah, later, Charles Darwin sketched a diagram to show how life started simple and then branched out to every creature on Earth. Uh, he said the different branches represent the different levels of classification. A tree of life, if you will. Those trees Darwin drew are now what we understand to be the splitting of species from the common Nope, that's a bad take. Those trees Darwin's drew are not Darwin's drew? Darwin. There, there were multiple Darwins now. Okay. Those trees Darwin drew are now what we understand to be the splitting of species from a common ancestor, developing different traits. For instance, Two lines may come to the same point, showing that they have a common ancestor, but one of those lines diverges into animals with four limbs, becoming what we now know as tetrapods, while the other does not evolve that trait. What you'll notice is that neither of them stopped evolving. Both of these lineages coexist, but they split apart. Congratulations! You now know the very basics of speciation. Oh yeah! I keep seeing this over and over again in our textbooks. Really? Yeah. Uh, huh, here we go. Check out this one. Are researchers still trying to figure out how it happened? There are a lot more of these diagrams. I think they change as different researchers group them based on different features. Well, kinda. If you pay attention to different researchers' diagrams, then you'll see that they look awfully familiar. They may be pretty different, but that's typically because they're diagramming different traits and different lineages. If we were to expound upon all of these diagrams, then as we get more complicated, the diagrams will look more and more alike, because it's showing the same evolutionary history, just focusing on different aspects. These charts show groups of organisms they believe share a common ancestor. Yeah, a group like that is called a clade, and these diagrams are called cladograms. Yeah, pretty much. Cladograms show the ancestry of related organisms and how they're related to each other. That. I should have probably rewritten that part, but I'm just going to go with it because it makes sense enough. Hmm. Man, and I thought organizing my makeup was hard. <laughs> so do they. Hmm. Well, not your makeup. Classifying animals. Okay, so remember that modern evolutionary classification is a rapidly changing science with a difficult goal. To present all life on a single evolutionary tree. As evolutionary biologists study relationships among taxa, they regularly change not only the way organisms are grouped, but also sometimes the name of groups. Remember that cladograms are visual presentations of hypotheses about relationships and not hard and fast facts. I think this book is a bit dated. Cladograms are based on actual facts, such as what we see in the fossil record. 
we have a pretty solid understanding of most organisms' evolutionary history, and the taxonomy they're assigned to is accurate, and their cladograms are representative of those facts. It is true that classification changes fairly frequently, but that's not because we're wrong about everything. It's because we're learning and expanding upon previous knowledge. Biology is an immensely complicated field, and fitting everything into neat little boxes is exceptionally difficult because nature does not bend to our will, and is not limited to our classification. The best we can do is find more data and more accurately categorize life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying our textbooks say that cladograms are based off hypotheses, not facts. No, they're saying that these hypotheses are based on facts, and so is the best representation of facts available for the textbook. Yeah. I'll show you why. Flip forward a page. That's because they only have living animals or fossils for certain places on the branches. These are real animals or fossils we've actually discovered. Um, yeah. Because the top of those branches is modern day, so we see modern animals. As you move down the tree, you move farther and farther into the past. We're not going to see present day ancient organisms. That wouldn't make sense. We only see modern organisms alive today and remains of ancient organisms in the fossil record because everything leaves some sort of historical footprint, which is exactly what we'd expect if evolution is true. But these branching points are just imaginary lines that represent the hypotheses about which animals evolved from a common ancestor. No facts support them that can't also support different links, or no links. We have very strong evidence for these relationships. Real facts support these relationships. These diagrams are based on the best evidence available to make the most accurate cladograms. All of the evidence we have supports these relationships, but I can tell you what it doesn't support. Special creation. The transitional fossils they represent have never been found. If they were, well, we'd see their pictures here, right? That's just not true. These lines represent the fossil history we have. We have millions of fossils in the fossil record that show gradual change the higher up the geologic column you go. Saying that these aren't supported by actual fossils is lying. Just because there are no pictures of fossils in the textbook doesn't mean none of the fossils exist. It's so silly even saying something like that, because it would be like me pointing out how there's no pictures of water in the Bible, therefore the flood must not have happened. Adding in pictures of existing fossils would make the cladogram better, I agree, but it isn't necessary, because this is a high school textbook meant for learning purposes. All that picture is meant to do is show the student the relationship between those organisms. Though evolutionists point to a few examples, there should be thousands. There are. There was when Darwin was alive. Over time, we keep finding more and more. The fossil record only gets more complete over time. And as it does, it gets more complicated. And as it gets more complicated, it becomes more clear. But clarity comes with some drawbacks, because as we uncover more and more fossils, it becomes increasingly harder to determine what is one species and what is another. Think of it like a gradient. We can see a clear change from one color to another but pinpointing where exactly it changes from one to another is difficult. However, if we were to take out the middle, then we can clearly see that this side is one color and that side is another. Genesis 121 says, So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves, with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay, but that's not evidence at all for special creation. That's just the claim. Even if you were to have debunked evolution, you would still be left with zero evidence for creation. At least the textbook talked about the evidence for evolution. You can't just say, that doesn't make sense, so God did it, and then it becomes true. Using the Bible to support that the Bible is true is circular. So, it isn't a tree like Darwin thought. Instead, it's an orchard. God created the different kinds of animals, and then they expressed all types of amazing variety as they bred within their kind. Hmm, I wonder if there's a word for that. Also, that whole thing about each organism being created fully formed? Yeah, that's bullshit and there's no evidence to support it. And recombining genetic possibilities that God packed into the original kinds produced that variety? Exactly. We see variation happening all the time. But we've never seen the evolutionary process of mutations and selection creating new kinds. That's because a kind isn't a real thing. It's a pseudoscience term used by creationists that doesn't really have a definition. What we do see is mutations and selection molding already existing species into something new, i.e. evolution. However, I'd like to note that evolution doesn't happen to individuals. It happens to a species and is just a change in genes in a population over multiple generations. So dogs, apes, and people can show variety, but can never morph into a new kind. And nobody said that they would. Speciation happens over many generations. It's not going to happen within the species' lifetime. That's not how evolution works. 
Like, I can understand when someone makes that mistake because they weren't taught evolution properly, so they just think that evolution is a change in species. But you guys are supposed to be debunking evolution. Don't you think it would be beneficial to, at the very least, understand it correctly? Yep, just like the orchard. One basic tree kind can never become another. Scientists seem to name something a new species, even if there's only a minor change. And in the fossils, the smallest variation is classified as a different species, even though we see lots of variety with some species today. So what is it, Jane? Do these transitions in the fossil record exist or not? Because earlier in the video you said that they didn't, but now you seem to be acknowledging transitional fossils? And with the whole classifying things as new species, that's again because biology is very complicated and species classification is pretty difficult. Nobody could point to exactly when something was one species and when it was not. Just because we can't all agree on species classification doesn't mean that evolution doesn't happen. Like what? Like in dogs. Just think about all the variety in the breeds of dog kinds, Canis familiaris, in the last 200 years. Yeah, I agree that the changes in dogs within that time is amazing. 200 years is a relatively short amount of time for that much diversity to happen, and is like, what, 30% of the total amount of time you think the Earth existed? Imagine if that rapid diversification were to happen over billions of years. Could you imagine how different everything would look? It's almost like you need to classify everything into vastly different categories because there's so much change. If future paleontologists dug up the bones of a bulldog, a chihuahua, and a Great Dane, they would surely classify them as three different species. But they'd all be considered dogs. Taxonomy has many layers to it, and we can use it to get very specific with classification. We could classify these dogs differently and into different subspecies, but they're all still related and are all still dogs. It's like how orangutans, chimps, and humans all exist and are all classified differently, but we're all still apes. You seem to at least understand that minimally, so I ask, where is the wall? I rarely see you guys talk about anything below the genus taxonomic level, so is that the wall? And if so, then why is there a divide? But they are all the same kind. Whether beaks of a finch change shape or a color of a moth, the changes are limited. When it's just expressing variety within the created kind. Yup, so evolutionists consider adjustments to existing traits evidence that evolution made those traits in the first place. And if you ask me, it's pretty strong evidence when considered with all the other mountains of evidence we have. So, what if God made each basic kind with potential to change some of its traits, but no potential to morph into a different kind? Dogs can breed with coyotes, and coyotes can breed with wolves. They call the chi wolf so they must all be part of the same created kind. It sounds like you're trying to shoehorn the biological species concept into a creationist narrative, which is just completely bonkers. Like, yeah, they're their own species according to the biological species concept, but how does that support your argument at all? So they have a common ancestor, but it was the original dog kind that God created, not the transition between a reptile and a mammal like they show in these textbooks. So fossils, the classification of animals, and the Bible are all in harmony. That's what it looks like. Actually, no, it doesn't look like that. Far from it. The fossil record shows us a clear and obvious transition in species that can all be traced to a common ancestor. For instance, sheep and dolphins. Saying that the fossil record supports the story of creation is so far from true that this must be blatant dishonesty or willful ignorance. Neither of which is a very good look. Not once have you demonstrated that God created any species, or shown a clear line of reasoning to conclude that God did create any kinds. Hell, you haven't even brought up anything convincing against evolution. Well, all of that gives me an idea. What if we organize your makeup by kind? All the nail polish in one spot, all the eye stuff in another, and all the lip things elsewhere. Why stop there? Are they supposed to be used to hide impurities, or are they used to glamorize? Then you could go to kinds, but then you could also go further. Are they washable? What color are they? What kind of cap do they have? Are you starting to see how complicated things can get? That's brilliant! Literally basic categorization skills. You guys aren't very smart, are you? You guys not understanding evolution is making a lot more sense now. We do an orchard, not a tree. It'll start to look more like a tree once you start categorizing things in a more sophisticated manner. Like, maybe everything was made by the same mother company. Then they're all vaguely related in some way, even if they all fall under different sister companies. Kinda makes you think, doesn't it? Everything makes me think. I'm constantly thinking. You can't stop this thinking machine from doing its thing. So I mean, yeah, kinda, I guess. But was I supposed to be thinking about anything in particular? 
What I'm thinking about right now is how I want to go to an apple orchard and pick some apples. Is that what you wanted me to be thinking about? I do this kind of content a lot, so if you want to see more of it, then make sure to subscribe. Also, check out my Discord and Twitter for more of me. Anyway, that's the end of that video. What did we learn in class today? That creationists don't understand evolution. Yippee! That's a lot of audio, isn't it? 13 minutes? Okay, that's not, that's not bad.